On this special episode of Supercars Talk, I unbox a new model, uh, one that made some history. George Fury's 1984 Bathurst pole winning vehicle. This is a vehicle that I have uh, eagerly anticipated for quite a while. Uh, one of those ones that we did not think was going to get made, but uh, Authentics have come to the party, thankfully. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is a resin model, which makes it easier for them to make uh, smaller quantities of them. Apparently with the die cast, it is very hard for them to... Um, make the mold and whatever so they they have to build a lot of uh quantity of the models which is why you know things like say zb commodore or a mustang they'll pump them out no problem because you can make multiples of them you know guys win bathurst they have pole positions at bathurst you have all the season cars things like that um realistically off this one you are only going to get this one car even you know maybe you could do the the different Bathurst versions or something but um they had a very similar paint job over the years um, you know just it carried through so it's very limited what you would get off the one mold with these um why is this car so special well it is very different uh i have a little bit of a nissan collection going with the gtrs and a few altimas um i also have the 12 hour winning gtr from the other year as well um they are going to do the it's not authentic someone else is going to do the hr 31 uh within the next year or so um but basically this kind of fills out my Group C Big Banger collection where, you know, I've got uh, Johnson's uh, XE, uh, Green's Tough Car, and, of course, the Brock Big Banger. Um, I also, I've got the Kmart, um, I think Warren Cullen and Alan Jones, um, their Big Banger VK as well. But I'm, I mainly wanted the three, you know, kind of the Nissan, the Falcon, um, and the Commodore. Uh, the, you know, they, they were the... I suppose the the headline acts of those days um why is this one uh, actually so special why did they pick this vehicle to be the model well on a very very cold Bathurst day uh on the on the Saturday they went out for the top 10 shootout apparently there was still uh, snow on top of the mountain not the circuit was fine but apparently on on top of mountain uh, there was still some snow so perfect conditions for this Jap shitbox that they would have called them at the time um, the first turbocharged car to get a pole position at Bathurst uh, two minutes 13.85 which sounds very pedestrian in this day and age um, but what's also special about this lap it is the fastest lap for a touring car um, pre-chase. So before the Caltex chase uh, went in, this is the fastest and it wasn't in 85, 86, it wasn't knocked off by the Group A cars. This this is, you know, kind of the, the lap record holder uh, from that time. So this, this actual car, um, it was the third uh, blue, Bluebird built by Nissan in the, you know, uh, for that period of time. Uh, in 81 to 84, they ran these cars. The third one that they built, um, it was a 1.8 litre turbo, supposedly making 225 kilowatts. Not much in this day and age was probably a bit more when they wound up the boost um and also this car had some things that um maybe weren't so legal uh fred gibson has admitted that they had um adjustable boost in the cabin which they weren't supposed to have um and they also fired the or aimed the fire extinguisher at the intercooler um so and they set the fire extinguisher off uh during the lap to cool the uh intake temperatures as well um highly illegal uh modifications that you know they they got away with because they weren't caught back in the day 
Um, this car actually won on its debut, um, the, this specific number three, or the, the third one that they built. Um, in 83, it won the Oran Park 250km race. Uh, that was a, a mini enduro, not part of the championship. Back in those days, they had all these uh, odd races that people didn't have to turn up to. Um, there was a lot more variety of racing, but you, you probably had, you know, maybe the guys like Brock and that weren't at that race. Um, I didn't actually go back through the history books. I just know that it won on debut. Um, the, the Bath, even though it um, had pole at Bathurst, the, this actual race, it, um, it was a disappointing day for them and uh, they didn't finish very well. Uh, George Fury uh, was the driver and he was actually a famous rally car driver before he started his circuit racing career. He actually won the Australian Rally Championship twice uh, and then uh, with Nissan as well and took on the role, you know, as, as a road circuit racer um, to challenge himself. Uh, he ended up finishing second in the Australian Touring Car Championship in 83 and 86. So uh, aboard one of these cars in 83, 86, they were into the um, DR30 Skylines, I think, of the time. Um, and he did win uh, the Sand 500 in 86 and 87 in a Skyline, and then in 1990 in a Peter Jackson Glen Seton Sierra. Now, for the part that we're all waiting for, the actual model, uh, as you can see, it, the, the really interesting bit, um, the unboxing. So, as you can see, I haven't actually opened it. Um, what I might do, I might fast forward this part because it is pretty boring. Now, you can thank me for uh, fast forwarding through that because it was actually screwed in on the bottom. So, it did take me quite a while to pop it open. Uh, comes with a nice certificate of authenticity, uh, 620, if I could hold that straight for you, uh, 629 of 1500. So 1500 actually, you know, pretty good run for something like this. Uh, so there is, there was a lot available. I'm not sure if they're all sold out now or not. Um, it, it is a, it does feel like a resin car. It's definitely not die cast. Uh, it doesn't have opening parts. Um, that's not an issue for me because I do display them with all the doors shut and that, um, mainly for some space issues and because that's what the cars look like when they're on the track. You, you know, you don't really look at them with the bonnets open. The detail, it it is a really, I'm not sure how that's coming up on the camera. Um, I'll take some photos and put them up like normal in that. Uh, that is actually a really good looking car. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got any of my other cars out at the moment. Uh, so I can't really, you know, put it next to what it looks like next to one of the Sierras or that. Uh, quite a detailed underneath. Um, see, seems to have a fixed axle on the uh, front and rear. I wonder if they had lockers in them too. No, because these were rear wheel drive, thinking it was a, a front wheel drive Bluebird. Um, that is an absolutely, that is stunning. I am really happy with that. I'd, great, great work, Authentics. That is going to look amazing in my collection. Um, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> down in the comments, um, you know, do, do you collect these models? Is, is this something that you'd want to add to your collection? Um, are you looking forward to the R31 Skyline that is coming? Did you know about it? Uh, let, let me know what you think. Uh, do you want to see more of these model reviews? Um, they will be a bit patchy over the, the next period of time because of uh, family reasons. Um, but I just wanted to get this one off because uh, it is something that I was looking forward to for a very long time. It, it's going to look great with the rest of the collection. Uh, so until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.